Good morning, good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever tune, time you tune in today. Thank you so much for tuning in to our lesson. Uh, this is Frederick Robinson, youth pastor of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is the pastor, and we are going to start in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning just grateful and thankful for another day. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our cry. You are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Lord, you are the strength of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? When the wicked, even our enemies and our foes, came upon us to eat up our flesh, they stumbled and fell. And Lord, I come before you right now just asking God that you would set us free today. Even in your truth, somebody who's bound up in legalism, in works, in lies, Lord, set us free. That's my prayer today. Set us free in your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have a great lesson today, lesson eight. October 22nd, 2023. Um, our unit is Unit 2, Faith Triumphs and Law Fails. Um, our title is All or Nothing at All. And our printed passage is Galatians um, 3, 1 through 14. So if you don't have a Sunday school book, I do encourage you, if you're watching this, to turn to Galatians, the book of Galatians. Uh, chapter 3 we're going to look at verses 1 through 14 and our um, lesson aims is to understand that we are not justified by following the law um, number two to acknowledge that spiritual growth relies more on faith than works and then number three to convey to others the message that Christianity is more than following rules Amen. And as we get started, we certainly thank God for our being here to my pastor, Dr. May, for allowing us to continue to have the privilege um, to do these Sunday school reviews because it is a privilege. And uh, to my wife, April, my daughters, Carly and Kaylee, thank you so much for just who you are. To my Liberty family, we love you. Um, and just to all of those who are supporting uh to my co-partner in these Sunday School Reviews, Sakoni Prince. If y'all watch me on these Sunday School Lessons, make sure every other uh, Sunday morning, Sakoni Prince does the Sunday School Review. And uh, do yourself a favor and watch it. Um, and you will be blessed. Amen. But we're going to go right into the lesson. And I do encourage you, Sakoni, keep up the great work. Amen. God bless you and your family. Um, the lesson in focus, and I'm reading out of the teacher's edition, um, it says, A rule is a set of guidelines accepted by all countries and communities designed to guide and monitor interactions uh, between members of a particular society. We learn about them in our homes, schools, and local churches as we enter the broader work environment and other human interaction venues. Some people object to following rules because they... Uh, restrict their freedom to live as they please. Nonetheless, no one can adequately order his or her life without rules. And that makes sense. Civilization as we know it would be chaotic without rules and regulations to govern human behavior. Could you imagine uh, our driving system without any rules? Civilization as we know it would be chaotic without rules and regulations to govern human behavior. Following rules and procedures creates an environment conducive to learning and living together with others with minimum disruptions and distractions. Following rules is beneficial for several reasons. Among these, watch this, are protecting people from being harmed by others and themselves, protecting the weaker segment of society and for job security. Despite those who say rules are made to be broken and then prove it, no society can effectively function without them. However, rules should never restrict human needs, overlook compassion, or become standards within themselves. 
God provided rules for the people of Israel to serve as guidelines for their relationship with him, each other, and other nations they would encounter. The regulations governing their spiritual lives and specific elements of the Mosaic law eventually became a substitute for worship and being declared righteous in God's sight. During the early church days, some insisted that becoming Christians was impossible without adhering to the Mosaic Law's regulations, especially the requirement to be circumcised. An example of this trend occurred when Jewish legalists infiltrated churches in Galatia and opposed justification by faith in Christ alone. So, just to, in Christ alone. So, like, just to, I don't know if you caught that tail end of that part, but this lesson is really gonna uh, hone in on people who are obsessed with rules um, this church at Galatia Paul wrote this letter um, because there were people who infiltrated went in as Paul said they came to spy out um, their liberty they wanted to take the freedom that we have in Christ there are people who want to tie you up in rules and regulations and I'm praying that God will set somebody free because it's even going on today. I've been a victim of it after I've been saved. So this lesson, in my opinion, is for everybody. It's one of Satan's greatest weapons because it's when he uses God's word out of context and incorrectly to put people in bondage. But all right, so verse 1, Galatians 3, 1 through 5, it says, O foolish Galatians who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. I want to know this. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He, therefore, that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Amen. And I said when I was reading this, out of all the lessons, Sunday school reviews I've done, this is a very important lesson, very important. So I pray that God will help us to really be able to hone in and help me to be able to convey this message in a way that it deserves to be conveyed. Amen. Um, so I'll read just a portion of the commentary. It says, boy uh, or girl, use your head. I'm sure some of us heard that from a parent or teacher. It sounds harsh, but the intent was to cause reflection and recollection, recollection for the individual's good. We can imagine the Apostle Paul exasperating, admonishing the Galatians to use your head. After learning, they were foolishly listening to the Judaizers' false teaching. How could they accept the false doctrine that negated the necessity of Christ's death? It appears to Paul that they were under a spell, beguiled like students aimlessly gazing out the window when they should be listening. However, their reaction was inexcusable because they had, he had presented the gospel vividly like a painting, a public display, like a masterful teacher. Paul posed four rhetorical questions to refocus them and help them reassess what they had been taught about salvation by faith. First, Paul asked them if at the time of their conversion they had received the Holy Spirit by faith or by works of the law. So did you get that? He said, oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive you the Spirit by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. So in other words, how did you get saved? And that's a question we can ask ourselves today. How did God save you? Did you do all of these tricks, jump through these loops and 
do all of this, these rules and regulations? Or did you just believe that Jesus came, lived, died, was crucified, buried, and rose the third day for your sin? Did you believe or did you work your way into salvation? Somebody ought to be shouting right now who's, who the devil been lying to to try to make you feel like you got to earn God's favor. No, 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 no. Because Paul also said in Romans that if, if it's of works, then it's no more of grace. But if it's of grace, it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace would not be grace. And we're saved by the grace of God through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a, I could see Paul grabbing, he, not literally, but almost wanting to grab him and from a spiritual sense, just shake him and say, man, what's wrong with you? He say, are you under a spell? And that's what the devil want to do. He want to put us under a spell to make us feel like we have to earn God's love, earn our freedom. Because you know why? You know why? Here's why. Because he knows we never will. And he knows that we'll live frustrated lives. Because we could never earn the grace of God. Wow. The obvious answer was no because they did not know Jewish laws and its re religious requirements. Second, assuming they became Christians by faith, Paul asked if they were so foolish to have believed that if their new life began by faith, they would have to obtain spiritual maturity by keeping the law. This is incredible because there's many people who know that they were saved by faith. But what they don't understand is they, they, they get tricked, and I've been tricked to think that now that I'm saved, I got to make sure I keep every dot and T of the word of God. You're not going to do that. We all sin. We sin today at some point. We thought something. If we haven't, we will. We've done something. And the title says... All or nothing at all. And we'll see in this lesson, either we keep the whole law or we rely on the grace of God and what Jesus has provided for us. Not only do you start by faith, this is what I'm saying. I could take a whole lesson and do an hour to do this lesson, but we don't have the time to keep you here for an hour. You probably won't watch for an hour anyway. But my, I do want to hit this this heart of the lesson. And that's not only do you start out by faith, but the Bible says, and it'll say it in the lesson, the just shall live by faith. That's why Paul was trying to shake them and say, hey man, are you so foolish having begun the spirit? Now you made perfect by keeping the law? Have you suffered so many things in vain? Have you ran in vain? Don't let the devil trick you. He therefore that minister to you the spirit and work of miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. Of course, it's by faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. It's impossible. You cannot, I cannot please God Oh, Jesus, without faith. That first title says, use your head. The second section says, look to your spiritual father. Verses 6 through 9 says, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they that be of faith, hallelujah, are blessed with faith for Abraham. You didn't get that. You missed that right there. I know you missed it. Watch this. So then they that which be of faith 
are blessed with faith for Abraham. And I'm just trying to follow the lead of the spirit. I know we got all these notes and all these commentaries and all this, but I just want to encourage somebody today. I want you to repeat after me. If you're a believer, you've trusted in Christ. Repeat, say this. I am blessed because I believe in Jesus. Say, I am of faith, so I am blessed with faith for Abraham. Say it again. I am of faith, so I am blessed with faith for Abraham. God put you in a compartment with Abraham. God put a blessing on your life. You blessed and you might not even know it. I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about for real blessed. I'm talking about super blessed. I'm talking about blessed by God because of my faith. The Bible says God, I mean the commentary says God declared Abraham righteous for believing in him. Watch this. Before he was circumcised, because what these Judaizers were doing, they were creeping in and saying, hey, you can't really be a Christian unless you get circumcised. And that's what people creep in and do today. You're not really a Christian if you don't do this and you don't do that. But I heard Jesus say on the cross, it is is finished and one early morning the holy spirit spoke in my spirit when i was wrestling with do's and don'ts and crossing t's and dotting i's and feeling like i wasn't meeting up the requirement god helped me understand you're not you never will but he spoke three words to me the holy spirit said it is finished Hey, those three words, three words from God broke something loose in, in me. It broke something, y'all. It is finished. What God was telling me was stop it. Stop it. Stop trying to earn grace. And that's what Paul was telling the Galatians. Stop listening to these lies. They're only going to lead you to spiritual bondage. And what made it so dangerous, people of God, is that it was coming through the word. It was coming through an old tradition of circumcision. But God had done a new thing. And you're in a dangerous place when God does a new thing and you wrapped up in the old. You wrapped up in the old system of trying to keep the law which a man never would be justified, but, but the Bible declares that we're justified by faith. Good God Almighty, I'm about to get happy in this lesson, y'all, because we free. Many of us free and don't even know it. In bondage, but free. In bondage in our mind, but spiritually, we're really free. The devil want to keep you trapped in your mind, but really, you free. It's just got to get from your spirit to your head. That's why you got to know something and then believe what you know and then walk in it. The Bible says in Romans 5 and 1, therefore being justified by faith, justified by faith. You didn't hear it. Therefore being justified, declared guiltless. That's what that means. By faith, by faith. Faith, that's why the devil wants your faith. If he can get your faith, then he can make you feel guilty because we've been justified. Good God Almighty, I'm about to run out this room. By faith, we have peace with God through, who is it through, Paul? Our Lord Jesus Christ. I got peace. You got peace. God's not angry with you. He's not at war with you if you've trusted in Christ. If you haven't trusted in Christ, you're on your way to hell. If you haven't trusted in Christ, you have no hope. If you haven't trusted in Christ, you are of all men most miserable. Trust in Christ today. 
Amen. The commentary says, Paul concludes this section of his argument by stating that although the blessing is available to all, it can only be accessed, here it is, by faith, not human effort. Paul's message has relevance for believers now because of the prevalence of so many challenges to Christianity as a faith alone reality. The necessity of teaching justification by faith cannot be overemphasized as we witness a falling away and defection from the church because of false teaching. And that's why no person who's operating under the mandate of justification by faith will walk away from God more than likely. When you realize God has justified you, not by your works, but by what he did, his work on the cross through Christ. When you really get that, it's liberating. It, it sets you free. You realize I don't have to try to measure up to nobody. I'm not trying to be like this person or that person. I'm just trying to be like Jesus and I'm doing it through grace, not through works. Because the Bible already said that when he comes back, I know I'm going to be like him. I'm going, I'm going to be like Jesus. John, the apostle said, behold, what manner of love the father have bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Watch this. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. My God, we shall see him as he is. He said, and every man and woman that hath this hope in him or them purifieth himself even as he is pure. You know, I don't spend a whole lot of time anymore worrying about how I'm going to end up like Jesus. <laughs> I just believe the word. I know when he come back, I'm going to be like him. I don't know how he's going to do it because I'm a mess. And guess what? The truth is, so are you. But the, good, but the good news is none of that matters if we trusted in Christ and to the best of our ability by faith we walking with him. Because when he comes back, we're going to be like him. Amen. Let's close this lesson out. The last section says, For all who rely on the works of the law under curse, as it is written, curses everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because, watch this, the righteous or the just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Glory to God. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Here it is. Through faith. Through faith. I'm blessed because of my faith in Jesus. I am blessed because of my faith in Jesus. I am blessed because of my faith in Jesus. That's three times. I am blessed because of my faith in Jesus. I am blessed and because, uh, because of my faith in Jesus. Amen. After masterfully providing that scripture and Abraham's experience nullified the Judaizers' false teaching that inclusion in God's family required circumcision by following the Mosaic law. Paul showed that its rules and rituals condemn rather than save. Did you get that? He, listen, if we try to impress God by keeping the law in our own strength, and by trying to do all these rules and rituals, it'll put us under a curse.
a curse will be on us. Just like it's on many people in the world who have rejected Christ and are trying to earn their own way to God. I know some people, even some good friends of mine, who just cannot and refuse to believe that Jesus is the only way to God. But watch this. I'm watching them live miserable lives. You know why? Because they're under a curse. I didn't say that. I didn't, I'm not putting a curse on anybody. Listen at the word of God. Curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. If, if you're going to try to please God by what you do instead of through faith in Christ, then you got to do everything that's in the law. Let me ask you a question. Have you seen the law? Have you read the Old Testament? Have you seen how many things they had to do in the law? It was impossible. And so it is for us. It's impossible to please God through the flesh. That's why Paul said in Romans 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. <laughs> oh, God. He says, therefore, any attempt to follow the law as a path of salvation was a risk of being cursed by God. Hence, life under the law is under God's curse because no one can per perfectly fulfill it but instead the just shall live by faith watch this you ought to be shouting right now Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written curses everyone that hangeth on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Either you're under a curse or you're blessed. If you've trusted in Christ, stop striving to try to please God by what you do and just walk by faith from day to day. And guess what? Yes, that's easier said than done. But at least you can start targeting your prayers. Lord, help me just to walk by a simple faith in Christ. Jesus said, if you have the, the faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed and thrown into the sea, and it'll happen. It's not how much faith. Somebody say, I just want God to increase my faith earlier this week. And I told them, you don't need a whole lot of faith. You just need the right kind of faith. You just need believing faith. And you'll be amazed what God can do. I'm closing, y'all. Finally, Paul explains the beneficial result of Christ's substitutionary redemptive work. First, his death in humanity's place made the blessing of justification promised to Abraham available to all who place their faith in him. Second, all who believe will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you believe, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You ain't got to do all these crazy dances and all that stuff. These beliefs are only possible by faith, not by performing the works of the law. The Galatian Christians were foolish to believe that following the Mosaic law made them right with God. Likewise, some today have been bewitched into believing justification is Jesus plus anything else. It don't even matter what it is. In it, if you put Jesus plus, you under a curse. You're not walking by faith, and that's why your life is so hard. Paul used God's word to prove otherwise. Therefore, intensive and accurate teaching of the word must be 
a top priority for the church. Because get this, as I meditated on this lesson, I said if, if it's taught wrong, it's going to be received wrong. And you're going to teach it wrong. And we're going to have a whole strain of people in bondage. The your adult says, do you have a good grasp on the important concepts of justification by faith and sanctification? And how can they impact your relationship with God? And I encourage you to do this this week. Make a commitment to study these doctrines either alone or with a group so that you can grow spiritually and live by faith on a regular basis. Let's pray. Dear God, grant us the wisdom to understand and appreciate the provision that you have made for our salvation through Jesus' substitutionary death on the cross for us. Empower us through the Holy Spirit to live by faith, trusting you to use us for your glory and honor. And I pray, God, that you would snap every chain, break every strain of bondage on minds everywhere. There are people who are listening to this message and they have realized they are in bondage. But Lord, I pray that the chains would fall to the ground even today. And God, we would all cleave to Jesus Christ, to the cross of Christ. As the songs say, keep me near the cross. Lord, help us to remember the cross. Help us to remember that it was not what we done, but what you done that have justified us. And when the devil comes with all of his accusations and blaming and accusing and trying to pull us back, help us, oh God, look to the cross. Help us to rebuke him and cleave to Jesus like our life depended on it because it does. That's my prayer, Lord. Set somebody free. And if there's any who's not saved, I pray that they would pray to you to be saved in Jesus' name right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If there's somebody who have yet to trust in Christ, repeat, Lord, Father, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe that he lived. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he was buried in the grave. I believe that he rose a third day for my sins. Come into my heart and save me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody pray that. Believe that God just saved you. Give him praise. Get yourself in a church somewhere where they are teaching the word of God. Pray to God to lead you and he will lead you to the right place. And if you want to visit where I attend, just inbox me. But either way, find yourself somewhere and believe in Jesus with all your heart. Thank you so much, those who have listened to this whole message. I just trust and believe you've been set free. You've been blessed today. Not because of me, but because of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. This is Frederick Robinson, Youth Pastor, Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is the pastor. Until the next time, we love you. May God keep you. May God smile upon you. And remember, all or nothing at all, you trust in the finished works of Jesus Christ and walk by faith alone in what he's done for us, he's doing in us, and what he will do through us. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.